Hi, I'm James Catherall, founder of Catherall Audio, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to assign samples and other sounds to your drum pads on your MIDI controller. So I've got an Akai MPK Mini right here in front of me. It's got eight drum pads on it. I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna assign the samples to these drum pads. So there's actually two different ways that you can set this up inside of MainStage. I'm gonna start with the more common one that most people do when they're setting up drum pads in main stage. And then I'll show you the alternative that to me personally is actually a little bit easier to think about when I'm assigning all these samples to my drum pads. And as I'm setting all of this up, I'm gonna explain the basic principles of what I'm doing inside of main stage because this process might look slightly different depending on what type of hardware you're using. So let's take a look inside of main stage. Here is my layout mode. I've got just my one keyboard set up right now. I'm gonna highlight this. I already have it assigned to my MPK Akai keyboard. So if I press a key, you can see it's pressing keys here because I already have it assigned. So these drum pads are actually essentially just another set of keys on my MIDI controller. And I'll demonstrate what I mean right now inside of main stage. I'm gonna open up the MIDI message monitor by going up here to window and then going down here to MIDI message monitor. And this is gonna show me all of the MIDI data going in and out of main stage. So if I press a key on my MIDI controller right now, you can see it sends that message and it's sending a C3. Now if I tap a drum pad, so you can see it's just sending a note. It's not anything different or unique or special about a drum pad. It's just another type of form factor of sending MIDI notes into main stage. So you can essentially just think about it as more keys on your keyboard. So this one's sending a C1 and my regular keyboard sent a C3. But you can see the difference is the MIDI channel that it's communicating over. So this is MIDI channel one and this is MIDI channel 10. So this is what allows main stage to differentiate these two different things. Cause I can also push a C1 on my MIDI controller right here. And there's a C1 on my keyboard, but it's on channel one. So that was kind of a whole lot of stuff and a lot of details of how MIDI messages work in main stage. But the basics of how you can think about it is that your keys and your drum pads are all sending MIDI notes. And that's gonna be important to remember later. So now that I've done this, I have my MIDI keyboard right here. I also wanna bring drum pads into my layout so that I can assign those to the drum pads on this MIDI controller. So down here, I'm gonna bring in the drum pad and drag and drop it. And usually when I bring these in, I wanna get rid of this information at the bottom and I only wanna see the drum pad. So I'm gonna go over here to text labels where it says parameter value and I'm just gonna select nothing. And now it just leaves me only the drum pad. So it's just a bit of a cleaner look. And now for this demonstration, I'm just gonna create two drum pads and assign some samples to them. So I've got my one here. I'm gonna hold option and click and drag this drum pad and that's gonna duplicate it for me. So now I've got two drum pads. Line those up and there we go. So now I'm gonna assign them to my MPK Mini. Click on this drum pad, click assign and then tap a drum pad. And then I'm gonna click the other one and tap a different drum pad. And then I'm gonna click the assign button again to turn it off. And I've got my two drum pads. Here's one, here's two. So now I have it all set up in layout mode, but it's not gonna trigger anything yet. So let's go to edit mode and let's put some samples on those drum pads. All right, so I'm here in edit mode. I'm gonna add a quick patch by pushing this plus button up here. And then I'm gonna push over here, add a channel strip. I'm gonna create a software instrument channel strip. And the important part for the input is I'm gonna take this and I'm actually gonna to go to none because it's not gonna show up here on this input list. I'm gonna show you how to assign them in a little bit. But that's the important thing to remember right now is we want the input to be none for these drum pads. And then I hit create. Then I'm gonna to go to instrument and I'm gonna load a multi sample. Go down here to mapping and then I'm gonna load audio files. And I've got two samples that I'm gonna load right here. And hit open. And I've got my two samples. I've got a kick and I've got a snare. And it's on C1 and C sharp one, which we remember just a couple minutes ago, those are my two drum pads. One of my drum pads was sending a C1 and the other one was sending a C sharp one. So it's also important for us to remember right now. And now I wanna make sure the drum pads are gonna trigger the right notes. So you can either do this at the concert level or you can do it at the patch level or the set level or anywhere, just depending on what you want these drum pads to do. Sometimes it's pretty common to put it at the set level or even the concert level. If you have these pads and you always want them to trigger really specific sounds, you can put them at the concert level. So that way, no matter what, you have quick access to some sounds, whether it's maybe like a soundboard type of thing and you have a couple effects that you wanna be able to tap at any time during your performance, or if they're just triggering other type of soundscape type of things that you want in between songs that are happening, you can have those ready at your fingertips to trigger at any time. But for now, I'm gonna do this at the patch level. So here's my patch. 
I'm gonna click on this drum pad, and then down here I have instrument one. That's the only thing I've got right now. I'm gonna click on that, and at the top, I'm gonna to click MIDI notes. And now these are all of the different MIDI notes that we can select to have these pads trigger. And I'm gonna go down to C1. So when I tap on this drum pad, it's gonna trigger the C1 note, which is where I put that sample. And then I do the same thing for drum pad two. I go to instrument one, MIDI notes, and I'm gonna select C sharp one. Scroll all the way down, there's C sharp one. So now I've got a kick drum and I've got a snare drum. If I hit C1, there's my kick drum, hit C2, and there's my snare drum. Now I can go back and forth. And I've got quick access to these drum pads to do anything that I want. If I wanna do more drum beats like that, or if I wanna have it trigger sound effects or anything, I can do all of that with these drum pads. And then I still have the piano keys in front of me to play any of my more traditional piano type of sounds. So that's method number one, and that's probably the most common. When people are setting up drum pads inside of their concerts, Typically they're using this method and you can drag in as many of the drum pads as you have. I only had two in my concert right now, but I have eight drum pads on my hardware controller. So if I wanted to add more, I would just repeat that process, bring more of them in in layout mode, assign them to the drum pads on the MIDI controller, and then go into edit mode and assign the keys that they're gonna trigger. And then you just need to remember what keys those are because that's where you need to put your samples. If I put those samples anywhere but C1 and C sharp one, it wouldn't have triggered them. So I need to make sure they get placed on the correct spot so they can be triggered by those drum pads. And when you're assigning them, that's the part that might differ depending on what hardware you're using. If you noticed with mine, it was sending over channel one and channel 10. So it's usually good to check in that MIDI message monitor that I showed earlier to see where those drum pads are being sent into main stage. So that way you know where to assign it and how to get all of it set up properly. Now with that done, let's go to method number two. I'm gonna go back to layout mode. I'm gonna highlight both of these drum pads and I'm just gonna delete them. And like I said before, those drum pads are just another way of sending MIDI notes into main stage. So you can actually really think about it as just a second keyboard. So that's what I'm gonna do in main stage. I'm gonna hold option again on my keyboard I already have and click and drag to create my second one. And now I'm gonna to go to assign and then I'm gonna tap on my drum pad. And now it's assigned it. And now when I hit drum pads on my controller, it's triggering keys inside of main stage, just like it would if I was playing the piano keys. So here's the piano keys, and then here's the drum pad keys. So I can just think about it now as two different keyboards, which for me personally makes it a little bit easier to think about it that way, is just thinking about them as keys and not necessarily as drum pads. Let's do one last thing in layout mode before we go to edit mode. I'm gonna click this keyboard, and I'm gonna call this drum pads. By the way, we know one of these is drum pads, and one of these is keyboard one. Now I'm gonna go over to edit mode and I still have that sampler that we created earlier. I'm gonna to go to MIDI input and now instead of keyboard one being the input, I'm gonna click the drop down menu and I'm gonna assign it to the drum pads. So now I still have that sample on C1 and C sharp one on this keyboard. So I can push C1 on my drum pad. That's my first drum pad. And then I have my snare on my second drum pad. So that's just an alternative way of setting up the drum pads. Because once again, like we talked about before, is just trying to shift how we think about them a little bit. The drum pads is just a different form factor or a different shape of the piano keys as far as MIDI messages are concerned. All it's doing is sending MIDI notes. C1, C sharp one, D1, D sharp one. It's all of my drum pads. And then I have my keys down here below it on different MIDI messages. So now for me, that makes it a little bit easier when I'm assigning all of these things. I can just remember that the top one is my drum pads and the bottom one is my MIDI controller. So for me, that makes it a little bit easier, but if you like the drum pad method better, you can still add those drum pads and route everything that way. And that's how you assign drum pads inside of main stage. If you found this video helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you leave a like. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and I'll see you in the next one.